All right, we're back here on the Ari Lewis Show here on Israel National Radio, Ruth Sheva. And the show is syndicated as Messiah Hour on YouTube. Go to YouTube and type in Messiah Hour with Ari Lewis and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It is free to do so. And, of course, a reminder that I'm on JAP. JAP is a Jewish application which features lectures from big rabbis and historians as well as episodes of this program. You can find JAP through Google Play Stores and iTunes as well as their website, wwwj app Me. Radio Mike is joining us for this conversation. We talked about the National League in the first segment. We're going to move over to the American League. Radio Mike, let's talk about the Angels. Um, as I talked about in the first segment, Albert Pujols is signing that big contract, kind of holding them back from getting other players. Josh Hamilton apparently is having some type of relapse with his drinking. Can you tell us a bit about what's going on in Angel Land? Yeah, well, you know, Josh Hamilton, I mean, that was a huge contract, a huge gamble, uh, what the Angels did in on. It's very, very sad on the human level that uh, Josh Hamilton had a relapse. Um, but in a way, sometimes that could actually be good because he didn't really have much of a season last year. Uh, but they had this uh, young fellow, uh, C.J. Khan, and uh, he might be his replacement, and he might, uh, you know, add some youth and some power to the team. So um, it might actually be a good thing that Josh Hamilton might not be playing much with him this year. Guy is like uh, Andrew Heaney. He's a 23-year-old uh, left-hander. He's very, very good. And, uh, you know, the best player possibly in baseball, Mike Trout. You know, there's no reason why he can't win the MVP uh, this year. Yeah, Mike Trout is fantastic. And, you know, what's interesting about Josh Hamilton, he won the MVP himself in 2010 with the Rangers and the batting title, and he was sober then, and it looked like he got things together. And uh, uh, the slip, I mean, it's so sad because – had he been clean his entire career, that's it's a surefire Hall of Famer, and it's very sad that he wasted his potential. Um, let's uh, well, let's stick with the AL West, and uh, let's talk about the Mariners. Uh, the Seattle Mariners, of course, have Robinson Cano uh, for, for a little bit. He came last year, played with them, big free agent signing. What do you like from the Mariners this year? Yeah, well, the Mariners should only be better. Uh, they were, you know, a much, much improved last year. Not much in the hitting department last year. Uh, Robinson Cano, you know, of uh, course, the Yankees didn't want to resign him for that long-term contract. Um, the Yankees might have done the right thing by not re-signing Robinson Cano. He, he did have a good batting average. I think he finished with, like, a, uh, a 310 average. All right. Now, uh, sticking with the AL West, uh, the A's somehow figure out most seasons to be in the thick of it, um, despite not having a big payroll. You know, I – they're going to have a really, really tough time. Uh, you know, they've lost a whole bunch of players. They got rid of Cespedes. They're trying to uh, make a big push at the end of the season. Um, you know, they don't have – they got rid of uh, uh, Josh Donaldson. Um, you know, they had uh, John Lester. They got rid of him. So, Oakland A's, they, they're going to have a poor team. Uh, there's no way they're going to contend. Um, no way they're going to make it. Um you know, it, it, impossible. It's really unfortunate. They had a good team, and they went for a lot. They didn't resign some of the players. Um, they had a lot of home run power. Now they're not going to have the home run power. Um, the Oakland A's are going to really take a downturn, and they're going to go back to their old ways. Of, uh, I'd be surprised if they have a 500 uh, a winning percentage this year. Wow. Again, Radio Mike uh, bringing out some hard predictions, just like the A's out of the AL West. And uh, let's uh, wrap up the last team in the AL West, only four teams that division, the Texas Rangers. Expect anything out of them this year? Well, the Texas Rangers, they, I mean, anything that could go wrong last year went wrong last year with them. Had uh, numerous, numerous injuries. Um, you know, they can't be as fast last year. Um, so there, there's one way, one way for them to go, and that's to move up. People thought they were going to do well, um, uh, last year, and uh, and they didn't. So um, they're not going to do as poorly as last year. They're still winning at least five, ten games more than last year. Um, you know, they still have Hugh Marvish. They have uh, some other good pitchers. Um, you know, they're not going to make it into the playoffs, but it won't be a total disaster. All right, again, this is the Ari Lewis Show here on Israel National Radio, Ruth Sheva, and the show is syndicated as the site hour on YouTube. You can go to YouTube and type in the Time in Messiah Hour with Ari Lewis, and our guest this afternoon is Radio Mike from Kewgarden Hills. Let's go over to the AL Central. You don't like the Royals to make the postseason. I'm going to go on a limb and assume that you think the Tigers are the best team in that division. Is that correct? 
you know, the Tigers have won it the last four years, but there's, um, you know, another team out there that, that has some potential, um, and that's called the Cleveland Indians. Cleveland Indians are a decent team. Um, you know, they have that uh, a good manager. Um, you know, I, I think the, you know, a lot of the players in the Detroit Tigers, they're, they're a little bit old. They lost, of course, Scherzer. Uh, Miguel Cabrera, he's a, a thrift ball player, but you know, he's been a little bit older, had a bad ankle. Uh, Victor Martinez, you know, he's been a little bit old also. Uh, Justin Verlander, he's not, nothing like the pitcher he was a number of years ago. Um, the Detroit Tigers are not great, great team. Uh, they weren't great last year, and they should even take a turn back and, uh, you know, maybe just take a quick look at the Cleveland Indians. You know, there's no reason why they can't win the division this year. Wow. Okay. So the Cleveland Indians, a dark horse team to win the AL Central title will tell. But let's get an analyzation of the Tigers. Um, and, you know, we have Brad Ausmus, who's a the manager there, member of the Tribe of Jew, been on uh, my program before. Uh, if, you do, if you think Cleveland wins the division, do you then think the Tigers pick up a wild card? Yeah, so it's, I, I would say one of the two, the Tigers and the Cleveland, one of them will win the division, one will make the uh, the wild card. So I would say that the, I would, you know, it's really hard to say, but I'm going to say that I'm going to pick the Cleveland Indians to win the division and Detroit to uh, be the wild card. All right, and of course uh, the toughest base, toughest division of baseball, in my opinion, the AL East. Let's talk a bit about them. Let's go first to the Yankees. Obviously, uh, you are in the thick of things there. Uh, being a season ticket holder at Yankee Stadium and going to all the Yankee games. First, who exactly is going to replace their cheater? You can't really replace them, but who's going to play shortstop this year for the Yankees? Yeah, well, you know, I, I hate to say this, and, you know, I hope, uh, uh, you know, that my fans, my friends in uh, Yankee Stadium aren't going to be yelling at me, but it was really time for Derek Cheater to hang it up. I mean, he was, you know, of course, he's Mr. Great and Mr. Everything, uh, but – he didn't have any range at second at shortstop, and it was really sad. A ball would be hit up the middle, or you know, to his left or right, and he didn't have the range to field it. And he hit in so many double plays. He didn't really have the power that last season. So uh, D.D. Glorious, you know, he's uh, he's the, the youngest player in the infield there, under 30. So you know, he has speed. He has a, a good glove. He might be able to hit 250, 260. I think that's going to be a step up for the Yankees rather than having uh, Sam Jeter uh, play every day. And I think uh, he hurt the team a little bit last year. I mean, you know, I, as I said, I hope no one uh, when I uh, go back home and the people see me in the streets that don't help me with uh, snowballs. But, you know, it, I think that's going to be a step up. And let me go on the record also saying that the New York Yankees being a Yankee fan, I'd be surprised if they lose any games this year and that's going to be 162 and 0. Wait, sorry, what was that? Can you say that one more time? They're going to be uh, – they're not going to lose any games. Until they're going to win 162 games straight. What? Why okay, do you – okay. okay, that's a joke. Right, no, but it, it's really – the AL East is um, – you know, this is why baseball is so much fun. Um, this is one division that you don't really have any good teams. Baltimore lost a bunch of players. They lost uh, uh, Nelson Cruz. Um, I could see the Yankees finishing first. Or I could see them finishing last. Uh, Yankees have a, a ton of questions. Each pitcher from the pitching staff uh, could be very, very good, or they could be, you know, uh, really, really bad. Tanaka's coming. Well, could have had Tommy John surgery. He didn't do it. Um, the Japan philosophy is not to do Tommy John surgery, but Tanaka uh, did not have it uh, last year. Maybe he should have had it. Um, but they have, you know, Keith Sabathia. You know, he was injured last year with a knee problem. I don't know if he can come back and be anything like what he ever was. You know, if he's a Cy Young great pitcher, it'd be great if he was a number three or four, you know, just a pitch, uh, uh, you know, to be a decent pitcher. You have Michael Pineda. He was out for a good deal of the season, but when he did pitch, when he did come back, he was really, really unhittable. He was really, really good. So um, they have, and they have uh, Ivan Nova. Uh, he's a terrific pitcher when he, you know, He's also coming back from Tommy Tom surgery. They have a lot of questions that starting pitching staff. So they could really, really, really be good there, or it could be a, a huge, huge problem. So that's why they can end up at first, or they can end up in last. And there's no really, really good team in the 
American League. So um, it should be uh, fun there, too. Now, you're certainly not a Yankee heretic by saying the team is better without Derek Jeter. Keith Olbermann went in great detail talking about that, that had the Yankees – uh, bench Jeter, he thinks the Yankees would have been in the postseason. He made an argument there. And, you know, Jeter needed that final victory lap, but they probably will have a step up by him not being on the team. And when I say that, I mean the 2014 Derek Jeter, not the 2012 who uh, who had such a great batting average. Now, let's talk about your favorite player. I say that tongue-in-cheek, Alex Rodriguez. What is going on with him? He was, he was suspended for oh, all last year. Well, what's going to happen with him this year? I <laughs> It's a, it's a $54 million question. Um, I mean, the Yankees did re-sign Headley to play third base. Um, so a possibly could play a little bit third base. He could play a little first base. Uh, that also depends whether Mark Carrot has a half-decent season. Uh, you know, he's certainly on the decline in his career. Um, you know, Mark Carrot is a, was one of the top hitters in the American League uh, for so many years. Um, so, you know, you know, so Alex Rodriguez can uh, be the DH, he can play first, he can play third, or he could be so bad that uh, maybe he's actually going to retire. But uh, it, it's a – you don't know what you're going to get from him. I mean, he does have uh, steroids and not uh, – he, you know, he still has a lot of talent. He didn't play all of last year. Um, could be, uh, you know, a, a terrific bust, or maybe actually if he does well for the Yankees, I'm sure the Yankee fans are going to cheer him on, you know, uh, they're always or not. Okay, but the sense I'm getting is that the Yankees don't want him to come back, but they're kind of stuck because of the contract. Is that accurate, or do they say, we need a body, we want you to come back? I think most fans don't really want him back. Um, he's not very popular. and never was popular. Nobody really likes him. Um, I'd like to see him not play. Um but, you know, the Yankees are forced to play him because then he has such a big contract. I think he's going to be making uh, 25 or $28 million this year, so they can't just cut him. No one else is going to pick him up. So um, he's forced to play uh, third base or second hitter or first base and be a uh, pinch hitter, and uh, hopefully he has a happy decent season. All right. Again, this is the Ari Lewis Show here on Israel National Radio, Ruth Sheva. The show is syndicated as Messiah Hour on YouTube. You can go to YouTube and type in Messiah Hour with Ari Lewis and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It is free to do so. My guest this afternoon is Radio Mike. We're giving a preview of the Major League Baseball season set to go underway in only a few weeks. Uh, we talked about Baltimore briefly. Let's uh, actually go to Tampa Bay because you mentioned uh, in the first segment, Joe Madden, not the manager there anymore. He's a manager with the Chicago Cubs. Do you still expect anything to happen with Tampa Bay this season. Yeah, so I, you know, Tampa, they don't really, you know, without David Price, you know, for a whole season, that's going to be a big problem for them. Um, they also don't have uh, Ben Zobris, uh, right field, uh, Will Myers, uh, Matt Joyce. Uh, you know, it, 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 they really took a big hit. They don't have uh, a bunch of players to, to fill in for them. Uh Longoria is a wonderful third baseman. He hasn't been that great the last season or two, but maybe he'll bounce back. Uh, he can stay healthy, so he can carry the team a little bit. But um, their pitching isn't that good. Um, so I, I would say that Tampa, you know, once again, they can, you know, they can finish maybe third or they can finish last. I'm not very high on the Tampa. All right. And, of course, uh, your favorite team, Again, tug in cheek, the Boston Red Sox. Uh, they won the World Series two years ago. Um, they made uh, uh, some moves in the past few years. What do you expect from B Town this year? Oh, Boston, you never know. A lot of people would pick them for first for first place, you know. So it's an interesting thing. Um, one of the uh, best players to watch in baseball who gives it his, his all is Dustin Pedroia yep. at second base. Uh, he's just, you know, fun to watch. He has that dirty uniform um, throughout the game. You know, he'll dive for a ball, slide, whatever he has to do to, to, to win the really feisty, feisty uh, second baseman. But his power numbers are down, and he's getting a little bit old, and he's just not as good as he used to be. And, uh, you know, 
one year David uh, Ortiz might not be the, the big popper that he's always been. You know, he's been a really, really great. Um, then the, they did go ahead and they got Sandoval to play third base. Uh, he's a terrific, terrific hitter. But um, And then they have Hanley Ramirez playing shortstop. So they have a lot of uh, solid hitters there. Um, but they don't have really a great rotation. You know, they, you know, uh, they lost John Lester. Uh, they're, they're pitching with, uh, like, Rick Porcello, uh, Justin Masterson, Ray Buckholz. You know, they're not exactly solid, solid pitchers. And without solid pitchers, uh, <laughs> they can score a lot of runs against them in Fenway Park. Um, so it's going to be really, really hard to say if they're going to, you know, uh, win the division, which is a possibility because there's no great teams in American League East. Um, but, um it's a, it's a possibility that they could win or they could, uh, um, you know, finish in third or fourth place. Yeah, and a uh, great point about Dustin Pedroia, fellow uh, Arizona State alumni, won the MVP in 2008. Not a big guy. They list him at 5'8". I don't even know if he's that tall, but he plays his heart out, plays his guts out. Uh, we'll see if he, he is going to his twilight uh, of his uh, career. Um, I believe he is 32 as of now, so we'll see how much baseball he has left to go. Obviously, it's different outside the steroid era. Uh, again, this is the Ari Lewis Show on Israel National Radio, Ruth Sheva, and uh, we've talked about the teams in the American League. Now we're going to break down uh, Radio Mike's pick em to win. Now, the AL Central, you like either the Tigers or the Indians to win the division. The other one would be the wild card. Let's head back to the AL West. Who do you like to take the division there? Oh, I would, I'm going to go with uh, Seattle over there. I think uh, with, uh, you know, Cano was second season over there, and he had, like, no uh, protection in the lineup last year. But with Nelson Cruz uh, leaving Baltimore, signing with uh, uh, Seattle, that's going to really, really help Robinson Cano. And uh, they're all thankfully better. They have King Phillips, who's uh, a potential Cy Young Award winner. Uh, they have other good pitchers over there. So I'm going to go with definitely uh, Seattle over there in um, – um, Seattle to win the Western Division. Okay, and uh, let's go to the AL East. Uh, Say the Yankees could win it; they could be last place. Uh, the Red Sox could be up yeah. and down. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with the, I'm going to go with the Yankees. Uh, why not? You know, they could win it. They have some, they have decent pitching. They have one of the best bullpens in the American League, if not in baseball. I mean, they did lose uh, uh, David Robertson, but they have uh, the Panthers. Uh, he's a terrific pitcher. They have uh, Miller. Uh, they have a slew of other pitchers there. Um, and you never know. Some, you know, they are a little bit old on the team. Uh, Bell fans should have a better season than last year. Um, if they get, a, you know, maybe one or two players out of their minor league system to fortify their everyday players, I think the Yankees could have a decent season. I know a lot of people are very down on them that they stink and they didn't sign anybody and this and that. But, uh, you know, I still have my faith in the Yankees that they could win the division. Okay, and uh, let's pick uh, Cy Young and MVP. Uh, who do you like in each category for the American League? Well, the, the, the Cy Young Award, um, you know, uh, I would go with uh, possibly uh, one or two pitches. Uh, either King Phillips, you know, he's been perennial good, and he won the award last, uh, two years ago. And last year from Cleveland, a very underrated pitcher, uh, Corey uh, Kluber, uh, you know, he's a very good pitcher. No reason why he can't win it again this year. All right, and for the Most Valuable Player Award. Oh, um, all right, you know, uh, possibly it could be, a, uh, well, uh, an easy uh, prediction would be Mike Trout. You know, he's coming to his own, probably the best all-round ball player in baseball. Uh, possibly Robinson Cano, he's never won an MVP. But as I said before, with the Nelson Cruz uh, hitting before him or after him, you know, on the team, um, you, know, uh, you can. Ron Cano has a world of talent. Maybe we'll put it all together this year. Um, of course, you got to like Mike Trout, but uh, Ron Cano is a good player too. All right, and before we get your World Series predictions, I just want to put my uh, predictions on record: the MVP, the Cy Young. I like Trout. Um, I mean, Trout's been close a few times. Um, his first two years, a best player all around. So I like Trout. Uh, it, for the Cy Young, I'm uh, actually, this one's uh, toughy. I have to think about this a bit, but I'll get, I'm going to, I like your pick of Felix Hernandez. Um, he, he won a Cy Young one year, 
with a 500 record uh, because his team just didn't give him any run support. He got it anyways. Um, he's still very young, so I like him there. National League, I'm going to go with Wacha because he's 24 years old. I think he'll hit in his prime. Again, it's a dark horse pick, but I like that there. And uh, for the MVP, I want to – it's a bit of a long shot. I want to take Sten uh, because of that big contract in Miami. He's got something to prove. We'll, we'll see what happens. Usually big contract guys don't win the MVP. The next year you had Barry Bonds do it one year. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try there. It could, be, could blow up my face, but we'll see what happens. All right, last few minutes we have with you, Radio Mike. Give us uh, your prediction of the World Series. Who's going to the Fall Classic and who's going to win it? Well, it, you know, it, it should be to win it all. It should be the Nationals or the Dodgers. Uh, the favorite would have to be the Nationals because they have that great, great uh, starting staff. Uh, that should carry them. But uh, I don't really even see any team in the American League that, that's all that good. Um, you know, certainly not the Yankees, uh, Cleveland, Boston, Seattle, you know, Detroit, Toronto. I, I don't see any of these teams in the American League being all that good. Um, <laughs> it would really be hard to, to see right now a team emerging from the American League that should be able to win the World Series. So, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it's a long season, 162 games. So uh, time, of course, will tell, but uh, it should be national year, and it's not the national, it's the Dodgers. Okay, so there you go. There's Radio Mike's uh, predictions, uh, World Series, uh, Cy Young, uh, MVP, who's going to win the division, all that good stuff. Uh, Radio Mike, thank you so much for being on the program today. We greatly appreciate it, as always. Okay, so <laughs> Sometime in uh, uh, October, we can play this back, and we'll see if I even got one prediction right. <laughs> there you go, right. We have it all on record. And uh, thank you. Yes, well, that's the name of predictions on the radio. You know, they're on record. But if you get it right, then you get to brag about it. So that's the fun part. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, everyone, for listening as well. Again, this is the R.A. Lewis Show here on Israel National Radio, Route Sheva. Show is syndicated as the Messiah Hour on YouTube. Again, you can go to YouTube and type in Messiah Hour with R.A. Lewis and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It is free to do so. Of course, a reminder about JAP. JAP is a Jewish application which features sharing for big rabbis, lectures from historians, and episodes of this program. You can find JAP by going to their website, www.j-app.me, or by downloading JAP from iTunes and Google Play stores. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, it is a Jewish country after all, you can email me at messiahhourgmail.com. And if you'd like to make a financial contribution to the program, you can do so through my PayPal account, which is Israel Sports Radio at yahoo.com. Thank you, everyone, for listening. This is the Ari Lewis Show here on IsraelNationalRadio.com.